Hello everyone, welcome back to Touch the Fire Twice. I'm Joshua and I'm here today to do a brand introduction and in-depth sniff comparison review of Outdoor Fellow Candles and specifically their tomato vine candle. But first, if you're new to Touch the Fire Twice, welcome. My mission here is to share my love and passion for fine home fragrance as an enthusiast, an educator, a reviewer, to inspire you to increase your own fragrance knowledge and understanding, ultimately enhancing the scent memories that you create. If you wanna learn more about what I do, why I do it, how I do it, you can check out my website at touchthefiretwice.com and follow me over on Instagram and TikTok, also at Touch the Fire Twice. But for now, let's dig into Outdoor Fellow. So I was contacted recently on Instagram by Patrick Jones, the founder of Outdoor Fellow Candle Company. And he was kind enough to offer to send me four candles from his collection of my choosing to check out and, and give him some feedback. Of course, review if I so choose. Uh, though these were gifted to me, I was not compensated for this. And as always, if and when brands or companies gift products to me, I'm under no obligation to review and certainly give my honest reviews as you've seen throughout all of my reviews over the years. As I always say, I seek the positive, but I never shy away from or hide any negatives or critiques. So as this is a brand introduction video, I will spend a few moments talking about Outdoor Fellow, the history from when Patrick founded the company, what they offer, sort of their brand story, their differentiators, and what they bring to the market. I'll give you a brief overview of the four fragrances that I was sent, and then I will do my traditional in-depth sniff and comparison review on the tomato vine scent, which means I will read through the brand's scent story, talk through the notes, tell you what I get from it, thinking does it evoke a mood, a moment, a memory, a space, a place, or time for me. And as this is a post-burn review, I will talk about the candle's performance, the strength, the throw, the projection, burn quality, to get those fragrance molecules up in the air and into our noses. And then finally, because this is an in-depth sniff and comparison review, I actually have four other tomato-based candles that I will do a side-by-side -side comparison on, which means I will say, oh, it kind of is like this, the note matches this one, it doesn't match this one, if you like this one, you'll not like this one, you will, etc. because most of you likely have not sniffed this Outdoor Fellow Tomato Vine, but you may have sniffed or be familiar with a few of the other tomato-based candles that I'll be comparing it to today, so you get a better sense of what this will offer you. So first, let's talk briefly about Outdoor Fellow, the company, the brand. So as they say here, Outdoor Fellow is inspired by nature and the great outdoors. Whether you're looking to bring a touch of the wilderness into your home or simply want to relax and unwind with a calming scent, Outdoor Fellow has the perfect fragrance for you. It is a small, family-run, founder-owned and operated business started originally as a hobby, candle making hobby and evolving into a business that Patrick Jones launched in 2018. And all of their products are crafted, poured, blended, designed in the US. And what I also love is that 5% of every sale is donated to the Trust for Public Land, which helps support public parks and outdoor spaces. Their traditional candle is an eight ounce single wick candle. They use a coconut apricot wax blend. This offers about a 45 to 50 hour burn time and retails for $32. They also offer bundles where you can get two candles for $49.95. And then they have some subscription plans or gift boxes as well. The jars are reusable. They're actually, I believe, an 11 ounce cocktail glass. Dishwasher safe, food safe, so you can turn this into a nice cocktail tumbler after you use up your wax. And another thing that is nice and speaks to sort of the sustainability and the focus on supporting outdoor spaces and really just the environment is that all of their packaging is fully recyclable, like street side recyclable, very easy to toss into your recycling bin, which is great. Currently on their website, they have about 14 cents ranging from 32 to $36 for the eight ounce candles. They have their core collection as well as a special edition Destinations Island Escapes collection. So looking forward to seeing potentially other limited edition collections throughout the seasons and years. And then beyond candles, they also offer reed diffusers. Let me briefly run through the four candles that I was sent, and then we'll get into the scent story of tomato vine. So first up, of course, tomato vine, pepper and orange, campfire, and finally, mountain forest. I have burned three of the four of these, and so I will be doing in-depth sniff and comparison reviews on the other candles over time, but I wanted to bring today's video to give you the initial introduction to the brand and my in-depth sniff comparison review on Tomato Vine because it is the one I burned probably the most so far. And I was excited to do this in-depth sniff and comparison review since I do have a handful of other tomato-based candles. So let's start with our unboxing. This is a somewhat rustic packaging, as they say, fully recyclable, and it is a, a thick cardboard, which makes it easy to do. On here, you have the scent, you also have the scent notes listed here, which I really appreciate, a true list of the scent notes alongside a scent story. And then getting into the box, you open here and there's just a little sort of pack-in topper here, also cardboard. 
And this is just a simple list of candle care tips when it comes to trimming your wick, letting the wax fully pull out, and then of course washing and either disposing, recycling, or reusing of your vessel. And so you get into the box here, you have the candle, and then you have the very simple modern label that lists Outdoor Fellow, Tomato Vine, and then a healthy list of the top middle bottom notes, and as it says here, eight ounces. So the scent story on Tomato Vine, inspired by a backyard garden, this candle smells like ripe tomato plants with added notes of basil and lemon zest to create a beautiful green herby scent. Top notes of lemon zest, satsuma orange, and sparkling pineapple. Middle notes of basil leaf, juicy ripe tomato, and galbanum. And bottom notes of lily leaf, star jasmine, and tomato vine accord. Getting my nose on this. It is true to form, true to name. It really smells like a very bright, intense green tomato vine. A bit of the true kind of fresh tomato, a bit of the flesh, but not overly sweet. It really is as if you were to rub that kind of slightly like hairy trichome vine on a tomato and you smell that and it is pungent and almost astringent and kind of metallic, that intense green that comes from the tomato vine, from fresh tomatoes. But as they say, a green herby scent or herbal scent because there is more going on than just the tomato. And when we do the comparison review, you'll see some of these are more straightforward tomatoes. There is more going on in this the tomato vine is an accurate name. It truly is primarily, let's say, 65, 70% that tomato vine accord. But there is a bit of a brightness and freshness to it. I think when it comes to those top notes of the lemon zest, satsuma orange, and sparkling pineapple, so you're talking citrus, citrus, and a very strong, sweet, acidic pineapple with a tropical fruit. I wouldn't call out pineapple specifically. Barely the, the lemon zest. I would say almost a bit of that orange, but it's kind of that bitter orange. So it's not super, super juicy. It is more that zest and the oils but that when you peel into a citrus fruit where it just mists the oils into the air, that really abundantly clean, fresh scent is what you get from here, but in small doses. It does not overpower. This is not tomato and citrus. This is tomato vine, that hint of citrus just to brighten it beyond just the dark green, almost tannic quality of tomato vines. Certainly some green from the basil. I wouldn't pick up basil specifically. I trust that it's there. A well-blended fragrance will have so many notes that you don't necessarily pick out on their own because you don't want it just to be a, a ticker tape parade of you see this, this, and this. You want it to be truly blended together so that they play off each other, which is what this does. And so the basil leaf, the tomato, the galbanum, that is an herb from Iran and the Mediterranean that actually has the resin distilled to create an intensely herbal, green, dark, yet also still bright, rich, verdant, herbal fragrance. And I do get that in here as well. That really plays with some of the brighter notes on the top, as well as the true tomato vine accord that we get in the bottom there. The lily leaf, I'm not familiar with lily leaf specifically, though I assume that is going to give similar fragrance to the actual lily flower, but a bit greener and not as intensely floral. Star jasmine is said to be not a true jasmine, but appears similar to jasmine, a vine that creates flowers that look very similar to your traditional jasmine. And it does have the similar fragrance to jasmine, though not the indolic, animalic strength that you get from a jasmine flower that some people tend to love or hate. It's a bit polarizing. Star jasmine is going to be a bit softer. And then finally, your tomato vine accord. So more heavy on the tomato vine, rightly so, based on the name there. It really is beautifully well-rounded. I, I would say this is maybe the most well-balanced when it comes to the other candles compared to here. This is probably the most well-balanced, you know, tomato vine garden. So it's not just the, a cut tomato vine. It's not overly garden where there's barely any tomato in there. It is a garden full of tomatoes with other things growing around you on the trellises and, and, and through the walkways. When it comes to the performance, a couple of things. First, I will note the strength on this, on cold and lit, is quite impressive. For a single wick candle, there must be a heavy load of fragrance oils in here because this will scent my desk if I have it sitting here opened and unlit. When I burn it, if I burn it in this level, easily fills this room, goes out into the loft. When I burn this downstairs, it literally comes all the way up to the top of the stairs across this level a bit sometimes as well, which is very impressive for a single wick candle. Let's face it, there are plenty of four wick candles out there that we all know that barely can scent a room, let alone travel throughout a room and have projection up into another level. Very impressive. Not in an overbearing sort of way. It was just a hint of it near the top of the stairs when I was walking through the hallway, but I was impressed that 
a single wick candle could make that kind of throw without overwhelming you because it is so nicely balanced. So overall performance when it comes to having a strong fragrance that throws and projects through the home, very impressive. When it comes to the burn quality itself, I'd say medium for me. So this one is the one I burned the longest, Tomato Vine. And as you can see, I did probably, let's say three or four burns on this. And it is, it's been tunneling a bit. So it has this sort of cliff where it drags down the edge, as you can see here. Now, when I lit this the first time, I probably had it going for maybe two or three hours, got close to fully pulled, but didn't quite make it. I didn't want to do the typical fix of putting the foil wrap around as we do with pretty much all luxury single wick candles, unless there's a lip built into the vessel. We're talking with Boy Smells, sometimes with Ness, with Lofco, with Harlem Candle Company, with name almost any brand, Diptyque, you're usually going to need some corrective measure for it. Not always, but I would say at least half the time. It's unfortunate, it's just the way it is with single wick candles, but usually I find the quality of the strength to throw the projection and the fragrance blends themselves to be worth that little bit of extra work versus say your Bath & Body Works three-wick candles. I did burn this one a second, third, and I believe fourth time, let it go further. The issue I was getting with this though is when I was letting it burn, I think three, four hours, it would start to get a bit long of a wick and soot a bit while still not fully pulling out. So I had to twice on the most recent burn, trim the wick mid burn so that it would stop sooting, get a little bit lower of a flame, but it still didn't fully pull out to the edge. I spoke with the founder and he said that most often when that starts, it will end up by you know the mid range or so correcting itself and getting that full pull. I haven't gone that far into the candle yet. Again, only probably about four burns to see if this will correct. This one seems like it's a little bit thick of, of a cliff there that I'm not super confident that it will on its own but time will tell. I also know that he takes feedback and is posting on Instagram fairly consistently doing wick and wax formulation testing to really try to land an ideal burn for customers. So I do believe he, that this is one of those brands that takes feedback and really does want to get to the ideal state. And I will say I've burned three of the four candles and they've performed differently, which also makes sense. You're talking different fragrance loads, different fragrance oils, it's not going to be the exact same in every single candle. Uh, the pepper and orange burned pretty well, so that one did end up getting a full pull. I may have actually put a bit of foil on this just for a little bit, but it needed very little correction. I think it probably would have corrected itself and fully pulled as it is seen here. And then I have not yet burned Campfire, that's the one I have not, but the third one, Mountain Forest. I did burn that one just twice, once or twice. It is getting similar to the Tomato Vine, a bit of that cliff tunneling. I've not gone as long on Mountain Forest, but I will say when I have burned these, it has been minimum three to four hours so it wasn't just light it and blow it out before it could pull. I really want to give it adequate time to pull before blowing it out because you don't like to create that memory, but that's what I was seeing here. However, I will say impressive strength and throw and performance, even with maybe the less than stellar burn quality on a couple of these so far. All that to say, you want to throw a bit of a foil on there and you will get the perfect clean ideal burn. And oftentimes when you really reset a candle to that, then on subsequent burns, it will start to follow your, your rules. But as we all know, there are some brands, some candles out there that you have to foil them every time. So that, that's the performance. I, and I will continue to update that in my future reviews for the other three candles. Now, getting into the in-depth sniff and comparison review, got two Bath & Works candles, one Apotheke and one Flamingo Estate. A few of these you've seen reviews on my channel in the past. And a few actually probably haven't because there there's some oldies in here as well. Let's first start with Tomato Garden. This is from Slacken & Co. Bath & Body Works circa 2013, a beautiful spring market collection. If you watched any of the videos from my Slacken & Co. From the Vault, Harry Bring Them Back, you may recognize this from the spring video where I was essentially campaigning to Harry Slacken of Slacken & Co. to reimagine, re-release, and bring some of his old wonderful fragrances out from the vault and re-release them with Slacken & Co. Notes on this one, fresh picked ripe cherry tomatoes infused with sweetened black currant and a touch of white musk. So getting my nose on this, the key difference here is that tomato garden really is not so much the tomato vine. They call out the ripe cherry tomatoes. There is a sweetness to this. This really is more the tomato flesh, borderline fruity, authentic. You don't get so much of the fruit itself in tomato vine, though a bit of the sweetness certainly is there, but you get much more of the green herbal astringent note from the vine itself. So not much similarities here, though burning together, they could be a really nice balance. 
Then I move over to another Bath & Body Works candle. This was the following year, Heirloom Greens. I believe this one may have gone wide. I'm not sure. This was a similar market collection. Snap Peas, I think, maybe didn't go wide. Not entirely sure. And this was actually poured in late 2013, so it may have actually been an early 2014 collection. And the notes on Heirloom Greens. Escape to the garden with this cheerful blend of Heirloom Greens and Tomato Vines. I will also say that if anyone was familiar with the Tomato Vine candle that released in red matte glass, in late 2016, early 2017. That in fact was not Tomato Garden, that was a repackage of Heirloom Greens. So if you know that candle, that is the same as Heirloom Greens. Comparing these two, much more similar. Heirloom Greens has that intense, astringent herbal, so astringent or tannic that it almost becomes woody powdery. Like there could be some vetiver or, or some other kind of grassy woody note in here, but heavily on the tomato vine as well. And there is the similarity in that tomato vine greenness here. Though I will say the Heirloom Greens, very much so as the name signifies, is heavy on the green notes, not so much the tomato. So it's the tomato vines and Heirloom Greens. While the tomato garden had the fruit without so many of the vines, the Heirloom Greens has the vines without the fruit. So comparing this to tomato vine from Altor Fellow, the Altor Fellow tomato vine is a bit softer, a little bit sweeter because of some of the citrus in there, that sparkling pineapple, the actual tomato fruit itself. And though it is green and herbal, this one is straightforward right down the road with that heavy green astringent herbal borderline tannic powdery woody resinous green notes whereas this is more balanced so really kind of take the best of both worlds of these two and you've got your tomato vine then we'll move on to the other two i've got here first up is roma heirloom tomato from flamingo estate which if you've not seen my in-depth sniff and comparison review and brand instruction on this candle you can check out the video here from last year this one is incredibly strong. Like Alto Fellow, another single wood candle, but scented half the house. The notes on Roma heirloom tomato are simply tomato vine, holy basil, and black pepper. So I would say strong, maybe a bit stronger and straightforward on tomato vine, on the tomato. Now they call us Roma heirloom tomato. I actually think there should be more tomato fruit in this one. These two I would say probably are the most similar though versus the Bath & Body Works Slack & Co candles compared to tomato vine. But tomato vine compared to Flamingo Estate is a bit less astringent, a bit more soft and balanced. I think maybe that star jasmine and a little bit of that lily leaf soften it just a bit along with the actual tomato to add that little bit of fruitiness to it, a little bit of brightness from the citrus. Whereas this one is really intensely green. I think tomato vines and basil are gonna be intensely green. Black pepper brings an additional intensity to it. Now I do think there's more going into this than just the three notes. I think I might've called out, check me if I'm wrong if you watch the review on the Roma Heirloom Tomato Candle, but I think it may be called out that I sensed perhaps that really resinous green galbanum or some other sort of resinous green herbal note in this one, that there is galbanum listed in the middle notes for the tomato vine with Outro Fellow, but in, I'd say lower quantities than maybe you get in this. Also, there's sort of almost, I want to say a lemongrass or something borderline astringent and almost camphoraceous, not into a, a patchouli or a cardamom, but almost camphoraceous with the intense, truly sharpness of the Flamingo Estate Roma Heirloom Tomato. I really like th them both. Between the two, this one's exciting because it's so provocative and intense with what it is. And I think it's a love it or hate it. If you love it, it's going to knock you down with love. And if you hate it, it's going to knock you down with, with hate. Versus tomato vine is more accessible and certainly a better balanced blend. This is your wild, conceptual, intense tomato. This is conceptual, really beautifully blended, but more accessible. And I think probably more people would, by default, enjoy it. And then finally, we have Tomato Tarragon from Apotheke. Notes the aroma of freshly picked tomatoes with hints of tarragon and a zest of orange. Comparing to Altar Fellow, I'd say Tomato Vine is sort of middle of the road, kind of a bit between like the sweetness of the Tomato Garden from Bath & Body Works. Not as sweet. I would say more grocery store tomatoes versus farmer's market tomatoes perhaps, or garden tomatoes. Just not as intensely strong or fresh smelling. There is green in there. You do get a bit of the vine. The green is, if they say tarragon, it, again, 
there's probably six date notes in it. They only tell us three of them. That's fine. But tarragon can smell one of two ways. If it's Russian tarragon, it will smell somewhat like a sweet grass. If it's your probably more traditional French tarragon, it's going to smell like anise or that licorice scent. And I think this is most likely the, the French. It's not an overt licorice or anise scent to me, but it's herbal in that direction. But <laughs> comparing the two, I definitely like the Outdoor Fellow more. The Apotheke is a bit more like kind of, again, some of the sweet softness of the tomato garden, a thinned down version of the straightforward greenness of the Flamingo Estate tomato. It's one of those where if you only smell this, you'd be like, oh, that smells like tomatoes, tomato vine, that's really nice. Compare it with four other tomato-based candles. And this one actually comes in last place for me if I had to rate them. Not bad. I enjoy it. There's nothing wrong with it. I would burn it. And some people may like it more than some of these others. But the tomato vine, again, I'll go back to this, is perhaps the most well-balanced in the sense that I do get the fruit of the tomato and I do get the vine, as well as the supporting notes of some of the citrus, some of the other green from the galbanum, the basil, and that tiny hint of a soft floral. It is stronger than the apothecary, which is also a bit more simplistic. We're doing a bit more of it here. The heirloom greens, just heavy, heavy, heavy on the green. The tomato garden, heavy on the sweet fruit, maybe a bit of that sweet and black currant. My two favorites are Alto Fellow and the Flamingo Estate. I'd say they're a tie for me just because they're different, but there's positives to them. I think pros and cons, depending on what you like. But truly this one probably is the most balanced when it comes to the fruit with the vine with this, again the supporting notes on there so that is my in-depth sniff and comparison review on Alto Fellow's tomato vine if you've tried Alto Fellow, please let me know your experiences with them if you've smelled any other of their fragrances that you think i should try again i will be doing reviews on mountain forest pepper and orange as well as campfire in the future let me know if there are any of those three that you are most interested in and i'll try to put that to the top of the list as far as the next one i review from Alto Fellow. certainly let me know if you have any questions and until next time take care